Thank you so much for the introduction. And it's been an absolute pleasure for me to uh, chair this panel. Uh, OK, so firstly, I hope it's an exciting day and you know, enlightening day for all of us here. So rain or no rain in Mumbai, at least it's raining insights here at IDSE. Uh, all right, so to delve straight into the topic, uh, which is addressing creative challenges, clients' expectations from agencies. So for the first time when I was introduced to this topic by the E4M team, I was super excited about it. Uh, the reason is simple because when we try to talk about the creative challenges and that too between clients and agencies, so there are multiple layers to it, right? So, and these layers, when I say uh, these are beyond, you know, meeting deadlines and delivering creative outputs. These are more of, uh, you know, about understanding the nuances of collaboration, uh, the constant push and pull between creativity and business needs. So, which is also my first question to the esteemed panel here, uh, that how do you see the relationship between the clients and the agencies, uh, specifically in the context of, you know, the constant pull and push between the business needs and the creativity? So, yeah, Baron, you can start, please. Yeah, hi. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, see, it's been a journey, I think, for all agencies uh, and clients. But now, I think, uh, in the last one and a half odd years, two years, with e-commerce coming in, uh, I, I think the, you know, creativity linked to business sort of matrix has gotten yeah. better, I would say, because most of the brands, and fortunately for us, uh, who we're working with, have been selling on e-commerce, right? So, uh, while there is, there are three layers, you know, top of funnel, middle funnel, and end funnel, comms that we are developing, and therefore the creativity involved in that. But I would say with, you know, the last mile connectivity on the products actually selling on e-commerce, while we always don't get that data, uh, that's, that's where the crib starts. Uh, but I think most of the times we are being able to map in terms of, you know, what's the business output, you know, that's getting generated from a creative input. So, yeah, coming back to the point, I think uh, with e-commerce, it's getting better. I mean, we are still a long way to go because, you know, the exact measurements and the matrices are coming in place. But I think from where we started uh, to where we are, uh, in that journey, creativity actually linking to business outputs has gotten better. That's how I would see it. Um, hi, hi everyone. No, I completely agree with that. And I also think it's because every industry has become extremely competitive. So the lines are very blurred when it comes to messaging. And everyone wants to build their niche. Everyone wants to build their loyal consumer base. So if you're not creative with your strategies, if you're not ahead of the curve and you know consistently pushing out that brand messaging that a company wants to project, it's going to get very difficult for them to stand out amidst the clutter that's out there. Yeah, over to you, Rukshin. Yeah, so I actually, I mean, of course, I agree. And I think, you know, with collaboration and everything in today's times where things are moving so fast and everything is like, you know, we need it, uh, especially in the digital world. I think, you know, from our, uh, you know, client side, I think collaboration is, you know, this word that we keep mentioning and using, but I think it is actually the best part of it because um, a perfect, you know, uh, a client brief from uh, any brand, anything, uh, can work wonders. And then the collaboration, there's no stopping, you know, over there. While, of course, we mentioned about, you know, business goals and how creative matches that, I think it absolutely matches perfectly. It's just that the, the perfect collaboration between the two needs to really sync together for it to, I mean, everything that you see that is great today and digital, uh, you know, good uh, campaigns that have gone live or anything that we've done, I think is, that would be the base um, of, uh, and the starting point, I would say. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So you touched based on the brief part of it. 
We'll come to that. Yeah. Uh, so before that, so Ruchi, since you are the only client on the panel, what are your views on the She's relationship? already under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, so uh, like we were discussing, the, there are so many multiple points that are involved when there's a collaboration between a client and an agency. So uh, first, uh, my personal experiences, if I would like to share, the first thing that I would like the agencies to understand is what the brand is all about. Uh, when pitching creativity, it's very important to understand the brand fabric. What is the brand ethos? Can we really go that far with a creative pitch? That is something that start, that's the starting point for any client, any brand, I would say. If you, uh, there have been meetings uh, uh, with the agencies where they've, uh, there have been few meetings, I can say, where the <laughs> agencies have been bang on in understanding what Bajaj Group uh, is, because Bajaj Group is a, a huge uh, conglomerate, like we were discussing also. Uh, even when I was earlier with Z uh, before this organization, so Z also has various uh, departments and what is it that we are trying to uh, get uh, support on from the agency. So first of all, it's about understanding the brand ethos. If it is media, if it is Z, then how far we can go with our creativity versus if it is a, a traditional conglomerate like Bajaj Group or Tata or uh, Adani, then where can we go? Every brand has that ethos, so I think that is the starting point for me. And then, of course, uh, I uh, give like a complete free hand. Personally, I would like to give a free hand to the agency because that's like an outsider's perspective, I can say. Because uh, we, when we are in the company, we have certain uh, limitations and binders that we have because we are also under pressure from the management. But it's always good to see a third person's perspective, how the agency is seeing your brand from outside. So I think these are the starting points, and of course, as we discuss, uh, it's going to be an interesting discussion. So, yeah, let's. Go. Absolutely. So you mentioned about understanding the brand from an agency's POV, and you mentioned about you know measuring success part of it. So just a question, you know, as a follow-up to both these things, that for an agency specifically, when you have a lot of creative people in house, and since the topic is addressing creative challenges. So how do you, you know, ensure that the creative ambition of the agency and the business outcomes of the client both are met and there is, you know, that's how maybe we redefine success for both the partners? I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. See, it's not an easy answer. Uh, I think all of us face uh, this problem day in, day out. Creative bunch of guys are very, you know, I wouldn't say difficult, that's a wrong choice of word. Uh, but they sort of get disheartened at times, uh, but that's for us to manage. I think uh, because we play this role of being the mediator of sorts between uh, you know the creative guys and the client on the other side, I think it's important to uh, be sensitive to each other and it's an expectation that we need to build both with the creative team as well as the client uh, is the fact that you know, uh, let's try and be as clear at a briefing stage as possible, you know, so that that kind of reduces the number of iterations, that reduces the chances of the concepts that have been thought through to kind of go through, right? But, but yeah, I, I don't think there is any one right answer for it. I think everyone is trying to strike that balance and it's an ongoing journey the way I see it. I, I, I don't see that having a solution ever. Right, because there are human beings at both ends of the spectrum. You know, you're dealing with people at the end of the day. So, yeah, it's 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 a professional uh, hazard we have signed up for. So we we shouldn't be complaining, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I think I of course I agree with everything you know that he said, and I mean you know when we're doing this and when especially we go into meetings and sometimes of course they don't go right, right? Uh, you know, it's either not as per a brief or whatever it is. And it's very important to know that creative is very subjective, right? Today, I might love something and you might just not. It's very subjective and it's very important for us, you know, when we're, and especially to the creative team, people who are actually putting in their idea or a design, 
they get, you know, sometimes um, too close to it. Of course, it's their work, it may be their baby, so they are very close to it. it. It's important to explain to them to be a little understanding at that sense with, you know, a little bit of empathy that, yes, we get it, but it doesn't work due to X, Y, Z reasons. So, you know, giving even um, creative, uh, you know, criticism in, a, in the right way and giving them feedback which actually can help them make it better sometimes could help. Of course, it's still, uh, it's, it's a battle because eventually uh, creative people really put in their hard work into something. So, but yeah, it's, it's an ongoing challenge always. Um, no, so what I would add in here is I think what Suruti mentioned at the beginning was very apt, know your client. Um, you know, know how and the spectrum of creativity you can bring to the table because when you're dealing, say, with a corporate client, when you're dealing with someone that is that has a pan-India presence, you need to be a little more toned down when it comes to creativity because also you're appealing to a larger audience base. Um, you know, in a country like India, there are cultural nuances that you need to be wary of. There are, um, you know, a lot of emotional sensibilities that you need to keep in mind before thinking of a campaign. And whereas, say, if you're dealing with a young startup that has a niche audience, whether you're dealing with, um, you know, someone that's anyways doing a unique product or unique category, that's where you get to, you know, blow up your creativity in a large degree and extent. So it is very important to understand who you're dealing with and at what scale are you planning the campaign. Yeah, okay. uh, I'll just add a small pointer to this. I think while, you know, she was saying, uh, you know, I think uh, it's a debate in the head in terms of whether you are creating a campaign uh, for the brand or you are creating a campaign that you believe that the brand manager will approve. You know, uh, because it both, I, I'm sure, being in the agency, you see it differently. I think as an agency, as, as a, you know, content and communication partner, you should be true to the brand. You know, that's the struggle pretty much, I would, I would say. That, uh, you know, it's, it's the perception. I mean, very, very, uh, of course, large brands have their brand document and all of that. But at the end of the day, like I said, we are interacting with people, right? So often it happens that there is a slight confusion in everybody's head for any presentation, be it a small idea or a camp large campaign, that you really want it to go through. So you then start kind of, you know, slicing, dicing, seeing what can you put out that has the maximum chance of going through. And in doing that, I think sometimes we become slightly unfair to the brand because we want the brand manager, or the marketing manager, or the CMO to be happy. So, yeah, I mean, that's where... That's, that's an interesting take, rather. So, um, Suruti, your Good. thoughts? Uh, very interesting discussions. And I would just like to add that, of course, uh, like talking from a client side, we are open. When we are having a pitch discussion, we want to know what is it that the brand is perceived as in the market. So if that first uh, click happens, then of course I think uh, that communication can go forward with a lot of open uh, communication, open discussion on how we can, because just as, as an example, like if it is a traditional conglomerate uh, pitching, uh, being pitched by an agency to participate in a NAS daily event, NAS summit, for example, but how we can find synergies there, even if it's not like a direct connect, if the agency can explain it to us that, okay, this is where the market is moving, this is how we have a way forward, because we've seen the dynamic uh, transformation that's come into the industry in uh, these years. We've seen uh, AI uh, uh, has taken over so many profiles, jobs, and uh, of course, the kind of communication uh, transformation that we are seeing. It's, it's become so important to be uh, there, just being there. Not missing out on, uh, even if your target audience is uh, not in that category, but how you can really uh, make a uh, first step maybe, and uh, how the agency can convince, I think that's really, that really goes far. And that is when you start trusting your agency. That is when that relationship also blooms because then you start believing that, okay, they understand my brand and they, ha they are there to bring us at the forefront in a uh, transformative way. So that's, I think. 
I think um, yeah. I would also like to add one more Please. point in there because I feel like there's also a very large generational gap because a lot of people in creative agencies primarily hire more younger talent because they feel that they infuse more creativity, they, knew, they know what's next and they know what's ahead of the trend and you're often pitching to somebody that's from the Gen X. You know, so even to blur that border of understanding what the new generation is pitching and if someone who comes with a more traditional mindset understands that, I think that also becomes a very big challenge for creative agencies. Great. So speaking about new generation and glad that you brought up AI to this discussion. So AI has taken over creativity quite a bit now and it has contributed a lot in fact in the creative aspect of it in advertising specifically. So I mean uses of AI has been vital for a lot of agencies now. In fact at SRV Media as well while we you know use AI tools in terms of you know creative ideation, research etc etc. But I'm sure with you, with your experiences with agencies, uh, you know, and you dealing with agencies as well, how, how is AI, you know, playing an important role in the entire process of creative ideation? And how is it actually, you know, benefiting or not benefiting the ideation process? Um, okay. So, there are multiple layers to this question, but uh, I would say, See, it's inevitable, right? I, I think uh, let's all accept. I mean, I personally is a very, I, you know, believe very, very strongly in AI. Uh, in fact, I was telling the team that for the last four months, I have not used Google because I've moved to per perplexity as a, you know, as a uh, source of information for myself, right? So I, I evangelize it, but, you know, any new thing goes through a cycle of first people dismissing it which stems out of fear probably uh, because they feel threatened and largely the creative fraternity again talking about them. Uh, they're slightly more sensitive people if I, if I may say. So, you know, suddenly AI is going to come and take away my job is like, dude, where does it have the creativity? Can AI ever be Piyush Pandey? And you know, those conversations start happening. But I think uh, the way the team, at least I can speak for myself and, and my company, uh, I think they, AI has been positioned as a very strong ally, right? I, I don't uh, foresee a situation where human beings have been replaced by AI and, you know, like the Cadbury, I, I think, five-star ad. Yeah. yeah, we are doing nothing. I think the plating is still going to be on human beings. You know, if I were to draw a parallel to a kitchen in a restaurant, right? All the menial work to me, which is boiling the food and prepping for the dish. But the chef is, I, I don't think is uh, replaceable, right? You still need to, uh, you know, put in the right ingredients to get the right output. And you need to plate it well so that when you take it out uh, to the restaurant for the guests, I think it, it needs to be done. So it's an ally. I would say I, I look at it as a very smart EA that I'm getting for a very small subscription, you know, who's far more intelligent than me and will definitely learn a lot faster than I personally can because it's kind of borrowing from the overall uh, uh, this thing. So uh, AI, uh, the way we are looking at it is a very strong ally. It, the fact that it is inevitable uh, you know, with Apple intelligence coming in and Gemini already being there, the moment it hits the mobile phones, it yeah. becomes commonplace, right? So it's in everybody's hand. So the wave is inevitable and that's what I, you know, kind of tell my team. So it's always, it puts you at a place of advantage if you are ahead of the curve. I mean, today you may resist it, you may deny, you may be in denial ki kya hai, main, you know, I've been doing this for 14 years, but it definitely has the ability to learn much faster. And, you know, what I possess is my worldview, but what, you know, this uh, system that's getting created, you know, has a lot of things that, you know, it's learning simultaneously for so many inputs. So I think it's a very, very, very strong ally, which we need to kind of collaborate with uh, to, to kind of, you know, be ready for the future. Uh, 
because I think one, we were having a very small discussion about speed and creativity. We'll Correct. come to that. Yeah. But I think this is, this is a serious enabler in that process. Great. Okay. So, I mean, you can be good with AI only if you're good with human intelligence. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, you have to have the right ingredients to yeah, get the exactly. right output. Yeah. You need to plate it well. I mean, that's not going to be done by AI. That's what Absolutely. my belief is. It's very personal. But yeah, we'll, we'll see in times <laughs> to come. Yeah. But I genuinely believe that it's not come to replace. It's always come to replace the, you know, the ideation part, maybe just open you up. But the what horizons, you do yeah. with that idea, yeah. you know, how you kind of contextualize it to the brand, that I believe will still be human intelligence. Great. And Anyone else would like to contribute? Yeah, I'll just, I think, add a little bit. I think he's covered most of it. Uh, but I'll just add, I think, you know, um, it was somewhere mentioned that if you think AI is going to replace creative, you know, people, that's not what it is here for, absolutely. It is only here to use it the right way. And if you actually use AI to your advantage, it is going to enhance. Yes, it could give you an idea where it might take you some time and then you will just get it, but it's only an enhancement. So I think the, the thought that, that people are feeling that you know you can do everything with AI, um, definitely we're not there yet. Who knows about the, the future, I don't know. But currently we're not there. It is a great enhancement. And if you use it right, you're only going to get better at your job. You know, that's what I feel. Just use it to your advantage. Don't think it's going to come and replace copy or anything like that. That's not what it was, I think, even meant to be when they started off. Great. Uh, I would just like to add here, uh, we are all talking about AI these days, but uh, since I am part of corporate communications more so, I've seen there was a presentation earlier on OTT. So I've also seen the Z5 days where AI, the data analysis really matters, where we want to recommend content to our uh, users, we want to get uh, subscriptions on the platforms. Uh, as compared to a simple corporate communications pitch if an agency is doing, where we want to, uh, I think marketing has seen the most, uh, I can say, uh, the innovations in terms of AI, but when it comes to communication, marcoms, building a brand reputation, I think that is where the agencies can just uh, uh, pitch in, step up their game, and that's somewhere I can uh, I can just say that that's a, a, a field where I still have to see the kind of uh, AI integrations that can help build a brand. So that's just one point. And I don't think AI understands the execution challenges that. <laughs> humans understand just to add in here great great so all right so uh, we discussed about ai we discussed about understanding the brand uh, a lot of different things related to creative challenges now something which is very you know uh, important for all of us and we all want to address it somewhere the unseen value of saying no okay so uh, we all have faced it right as agencies as clients uh, where you know, there have been moments when say agencies have said no to a client that this won't be possible for us or maybe the clients uh, would have not taken that up or maybe the agencies would have to do it because even if they say no, they, they were bound to do it. Right? So there have been challenges that way. So how do you see this entire scenario where, you know, say for agencies specifically, so has there been an instance where you wanted to say no? say for any you know any piece of creativity or any piece of campaign but you couldn't and you had to do it no i think that happens all of the time and uh, it's very natural because again you're dealing with people you're dealing with different kinds of people within one brand itself there'll be three people with three different opinions and will want you to execute um, things in a different way will want innovation and creativity to the table but might not be able to support the agency to get that creative output out there. Because eventually, at the end of the day, as an agency, you can suggest multiple ideas. But as a brand, if you cannot support us executing that, it's, it's a moot effort. So yes, there have been multiple occasions where you've had to align with the client. Um, it's not saying no specifically, but it's just about changing the narrative slightly or meeting halfway through because you're always going to reach that dead end where you feel like you started off with something, but you can't execute it any further due to multiple challenges on board. 
Okay. I've just become the first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I mean, wanted to say no, yes, maybe multiple times, I think, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's, that's part of, you know, uh, agency, client, life in that sense, or marketing in that sense. Um, but I think it's important for both, you know, whether a client says no or agency no says no, um, is there a solution to it? What can we do? You know, if not this way, then what? I think that's what I think most of the times clients expect. I mean, we can't do something definitely. There might be multiple constraints a lot of times that come in. But I think a great way that agencies can, you know, help in that way is if there is another way of doing it. Is there another solution that we can, uh, you know, uh, bank on? Uh, but yes, of course, to clients saying no, uh, I'll give it to Suruchi to mention that. <laughs> yeah, so no, I think this is where I would like to pitch in the audience as well and say, uh, are there any client side people in our audience? Uh, if they can just uh, raise their hands. <laughs> oh, Three okay. Of them, yeah. <laughs> so it's the entire room is <laughs> the entire room is uh, age stronger with agency people. But yeah, uh, there are different uh, different constraints, different things that we uh, face when we are saying no to a certain creative idea. Uh, at uh, uh, like Komal was saying, there can be budget constraints, and how Rukshin mentioned that they need to understand the brand and they can give solutions like if even if there is a budget constraint or even if there is a creative uh, like the uh, understanding the brand fabric the brand ethos so that is where we would expect the agency to come in and say Ki, okay if this is our budget this is something that can be done in a way where it meets uh, best of both and uh, rather than just i uh, like I was mentioning, there are uh, agencies that just want to say that, okay, we are good at this, we have had so many great clients, so we would want to have to stick to our, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, stick to our pitches. <laughs> yeah, but then, yeah, which is why I said that I would like to open the floor for the audience as well and say that how we can make this, our relationship uh, smoother, make, uh, because th that's what we're discussing here. Right. So if there can be these ideas of how uh, we can all have a collaborative, because ultimately it's an extended team for any brand. An agency is thought uh, through uh, uh, as an extended team for any brand that's uh, been uh, uh, associated uh, with for years, may it be for uh, CRM, communications, PR. So understanding the constraints of the brand, over the time you can understand what the brand is expecting, I think then the no's are going to be less so. Hmm. No, I, I'll probably like zoom out because I've also been on that side of the table. And uh, my view on this saying no is, you know, at an insight level, saying no in any partnership, any partnership, you can take friends and, you know, roommates, clients, uh, husband, wife. I think no comes from a very strong and deep uh, understanding of each other, right? And I think at times that is missing. So no does not mean that if you're not agreeing to my creative idea as a client, uh, you are going to like hold me responsible. Like, you said that you didn't want campaign. It's not that. I think when you say no, uh, you genuinely mean that, okay, fine, I give in because you believe more in this than I do. So I'll go with your belief, right? Uh, that's a no. Uh, and okay, come what may, you know, we'll figure how to kind of get through, you know. So there have been multiple instances of no. Uh, uh, but I think what we've been fortunate of uh, is the fact that even after, you know, not all could work the way we had anticipated, you know, that it will happen, ki haan, ye itna shares ho jayega and all of that. But I think uh, I would thank, uh, you know, uh, all the clients uh, so far uh, for the fact that they stood by us. So when they, when they actually gave in to a no from the agency, they kind of stood back. They didn't point fingers back at us saying that they, you yeah, they know. Understood, yeah. Because they're, they're, it's not really, I mean, while there is a hierarchy and, you know, like I said, it's people at the end of the day. But I think we've been fortunate with most, uh, not all, but most where they've stood by saying that, okay, 
let's do it this way let's do it your way and see what it goes where it goes so great yeah, yeah. So this is where i would really like to say that that's what is important because i've also seen leaders and uh, managers i'm not only talking <laughs> from the, because sometimes they just say ki okay this agency does not understand us but it's also important for a client for a brand to explain your perspective to the agency and trust them with coming back to you with solutions so i think that's right. sorry and last thing to adini and i do believe a lot of the times um, it's very easy for the client also to say no if you've pitched three idea they'll just say no without an explanation about why it didn't work and i think that's where the challenge occurs right and you're absolutely right it, the brief needs to be more clear if you didn't like something why did you not like it and why do you think it can't be executed so you're giving the agency a chance to course correct as well all right